All right, great. So yeah, once again, uh, thanks to uh, Civic Tech Toronto for organizing uh, tonight's event. Uh, we're really looking forward to um, uh, sharing about uh, the future of development uh, in Toronto. So this is going to be a highly visual uh, presentation, so I definitely recommend uh, viewing this on as large a screen as possible. All right, so let's get, uh, get right into it. So what you're looking at is a 3D model of, of downtown Toronto. The buildings that you see highlighted in blue are currently under construction. Buildings in pink are currently proposed or approved. And here's that same image overlaid with uh, Toronto's uh, subway lines, including the Ontario line, which is currently under construction. So uh, Toronto is the fastest growing city in, uh, in North America. It's also its high rise construction capital. Uh, there are over 100 uh, currently under construction, uh, an additional 300 are proposed. And we also have well over 200 uh, construction cranes operating in sites throughout the city. So here's a look at uh, some projections of Toronto's uh, skyline. Uh, this is of the downtown core, and this view faces northwest. Uh, one thing that you will note is that in many cases, buildings are not only getting uh, taller, but they're also getting more slender. Uh, toward the uh, bottom of the image, uh, I've, um, I've labeled a few uh, notable height peaks that are emerging. So those are Young and Bloor, uh, Young and Girard, uh, the Entertainment District, and, and Waterfront East. So these are um, our clearest uh, projections in terms of what uh, the city's uh, skyline might look like. And these are based on uh, current development applications submitted to the city. Here are a few more uh, skyline uh, projections, uh, this time of Midtown Toronto. Uh, so this image is centered on Young and Eglinton, and you have uh, Young and Davis Davisville toward the left of the image. So here's another uh, interesting stat. So Toronto is projected to overtake Chicago as uh, North America's second city for a number of skyscrapers. Uh, this is second only to New York City. This image is, uh, is centered on Young and Bloor and uh, focuses on the areas um, surrounding. Once again, these are developments that are under construction. And here's that same image with uh, development proposals. So there are also a number of uh, super tall skyscrapers that are in development throughout the city. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what a super tall skyscraper is, uh, it's defined as a building that exceeds uh, 300 meters in height, so just over 1,000 feet. Uh, there are currently seven uh, in development in Toronto. Uh, two of them are under construction. So those are the one at uh, Young and Bloor and also Sky Tower at, uh, at One Young. And both these buildings are contending for the title of Canada's tallest building. Uh, in the case of the one, uh, it was approved at 85 stories, but the developer has submitted for a height increase, which would take its, uh, its total height up to 94 stories. Uh, of these seven buildings, uh, two of them are dedicated to commercial office towers, and the remaining five are mixed-use residential buildings, where the a majority of their uh, occupiable floor area is dedicated to residential uses. Uh, also toward the left uh, of the image are the uh, CN Tower and First Canadian Place for reference. Uh, First Canadian Place uh, has been Canada's tallest building since it was completed in 1975, and it's a 72-story uh, office tower. Here's a look at uh, where those uh, seven uh, super talls are located, uh, in addition to some of the tallest new uh, proposals that are in the downtown core. Uh, interesting to note that uh, of the seven, only one of them is located in the financial district, which uh, historically has been the, uh, the area with the tallest skyscrapers in the city. 
Uh, there are also a number of tall buildings uh, that are going up uh, west uh, in the entertainment district, uh, south along um, Toronto's eastern waterfront, uh, as well as north along Young Street toward, uh, toward Yorkville. So of the um, high rises that are currently in development, uh, the vast majority of them are either residential or mixed use residential. That's roughly, uh, roughly 90%. And this has a been a trend that has been um, continuing since the, the condominium boom in the mid 2000s. Here's a uh, visualization of uh, what that looks like in the downtown core. Uh, once again, all the buildings highlighted are currently uh, proposed or under construction. Uh, buildings in, in yellow are residential. Buildings in purple are uh, mixed use residential and buildings in red are commercial office towers. So uh, moving north, uh, this is an image of uh, Midtown Toronto. Uh, Young Street uh, runs along the, the center of the image. Uh, do note the development clusters at uh, Young and Eglinton, Young and Davisville, as well as Young and St. Clair. This is a closer look at uh, the Young and Eglinton uh, neighborhood. Right at the intersection, you have um, towers proposed upwards of 65 stories. Uh, that height does taper off as you enter the streets immediately north and south, as well as east along Eglinton Avenue. So what is uh, driving Toronto's um, high-rise construction boom? Well, there are a uh, number of different um, factors that have contributed to this growth, but I will touch on three. Uh, these are policy, uh, immigration, and investment. So one of the earlier contributing factors to um, this development boom throughout Toronto and surrounding regions has been the Green Belt. So this was part of the Ontario Places to Grow Act. Uh, this was in the mid to early 2000s. And what this effectively uh, did was limit the amount of urban sprawl away from cities like Toronto. So this not only increased land values, but also limited the amount of buildable land area that uh, developers had access to. So as part of the Places to Grow Act, uh, several urban growth centers were identified as areas of intensification. So in the city of Toronto, these are areas like downtown Toronto, uh, Young and Eglinton, uh, and Northwood Centre. Uh, outside of the city of Toronto proper, you have areas like Vaughan Metropolitan Centre and downtown Mississauga. So Toronto is uh, quite a large city. Um, and this is uh, an aerial photograph taken by Chris Hadfield uh, showing the city's uh, urban landscape. So despite uh, the amount of high rises that we see and those are, that are under construction, uh, the majority of Toronto is relatively low density. And I think this image uh, really illustrates that uh, quite well. So I've also highlighted um, major identifiable urban growth centers that you can see in this image. So those are downtown Young and Eglinton, uh, Northbrook Center and Vaughan Metropolitan Center. But as you can see, um, there aren't many high rises uh, in between, or at least uh, areas that are uh, well built up uh, compared to, say, the downtown core, for example. So why does this image look the way it does? Well, the vast majority of Toronto's built uh, buildable land area is dominated what is uh, referred to as the yellow belt. So in the city of Toronto's official land use plan, uh, these are what is ref what are referred to as the neighborhoods. So these are areas are not zoned for, for high density uh, development. And uh, for this reason, uh, you see a lot of um, high rise development and construction only happening in certain areas. In this case, these are the areas that are highlighted in red. So as a result of um, the city's land use plan, um, you get development patterns um, like the one shown up on the screen. So this is an image of development uh, along Young Street in Midtown Toronto. Uh, as you can see, you have 
large concentrations of high rises and development uh, immediately next to surrounding uh, low density neighborhoods. So another major uh, catalyst that has uh, contributed to the growth of the city is uh, immigration and uh, investment, and the two go hand in hand. So Canada uh, historically has been a very attractive place for immigration. Uh, the most recent numbers that we have are over 400,000 uh, newcomers are coming to Canada annually, and this trend will continue over the next several years. Uh, of that uh, of that number, uh, roughly a quarter uh, or 100, over 100,000 are moving to the greater Toronto area. Uh, in the city of Toronto, uh, three and a half million people are expected to live here by 2030, which is roughly a 30% increase from where we are today. So why Toronto? Uh, there are certainly uh, a number of different reasons, but I've um, I've highlighted a few. So we are the financial and economic uh, capital of the country. Uh, we have uh, internationally recognized hospitals and research facilities. Uh, we're also North America's third largest tech hub. Uh, we consistently rank high in terms of uh, livability and, uh, and the list goes on. Of course, with our uh, increasing uh, population and, um, and investment, uh, this is definitely placed uh, constrained in terms of housing supply and demand. Uh, this is certainly a, a very large topic and, and we don't have time to get into uh, that today, but I do think it was worth, uh, worth mentioning in terms of factors that are driving, um, driving development and growth uh, in the city. So now let's uh, look at a few different uh, development trends that we're seeing throughout the city of Toronto. So uh, the first one here is uh, transit-oriented communities and development. Here's a look at uh, development proposals uh, east along Eglinton Avenue, uh, along the Eglinton Crosstown LRT. Uh, further along uh, east on Edmonton Avenue, we have Don Mills and Edmonton. Here's a look at um, development that's uh, proposed and under construction in the area. And here's a look at um, the Golden Mile. So for those of you familiar with the neighborhood as it exists today, uh, it's predominantly uh, strip malls and uh, industrial uh, uses, but as a result of a major transit line um, running through the neighborhood, we are seeing uh, a significant number of new proposals um, in the in the area. Here's a look at uh, at Young Street um, in in North York. Uh, do note the uh, number of new proposals north of Finch. Uh, this, of course, is in anticipation of the Young Street Line 1 extension to, to Richmond Hill. And here's a closer look at, um, at the number of proposals at Young and Steeles. So there are towers uh, proposed here up to 65 stories at the intersection, uh, as well as the uh, redevelopment of Centerpoint Mall on the southwest uh, southwest corner. Another uh, interesting trend that we are seeing is uh, with malls and condos. So as uh, as land values have increased uh, throughout the city and as land becomes more scarce, uh, typically major shopping centers and malls are well connected to transit and surface grade parking is uh, is heavily underutilized. So here's a look at um, at developments surrounding Yorkdale Mall. Uh, there are a number of towers uh, that are proposed here to replace the surface grade parking. Here's uh, Sherway Gardens in Etobicoke, uh, Fairview Mall, and uh, Scarborough Town Center. So as, um, as land becomes more scarce, uh, especially in the downtown core, we're also seeing some interesting um, architectural and engineering feats. 
Uh, on the left, you have uh, a development uh, called 488 University. It's actually um, was completed uh, in recent years. It's a 30 plus story residential addition on top of an existing 20 story office building. And, uh, and to the right is um, a proposal at uh, Bay and Bloor, uh, 1200, um, 1200 Bay, which is a, uh, I guess what you could call a super slender skyscraper, uh, not unlike those that you're seeing in, um, in Manhattan. And of course, this is only scratching the surface. Um, we've been talking about development in the city of Toronto, but there are a number of different uh, urban growth areas um, outside of the city. So these are areas like Vaughan Metropolitan Centre, uh, Mississauga City Centre, and, uh, and Richmond Hill. Yes, yeah, so once again, uh, you know, my hope with this presentation and with, um, with these 3D models is that it fuels a, a mostly positive discussion on, on the future of the city. Uh, hopefully it was uh, informative and um, gave you a preview of what, uh, what the city may look like uh, in the coming years. So if you want to um, learn more about growth in the city and, and maybe come across a few more images, uh, you can visit my website at stephenblaswood.com. Uh, also, uh, make sure you follow Future Model TO on Twitter and uh, feel free to connect with me on, on LinkedIn. So I think uh, now we are um, opening up the floor to uh, a Q&A.